so excited to bring another video to you today all about high-end jewelry brands that you need on your radar. These are mostly costume jewelry brands, but they are good to know so when you are out and about and looking at garage sales or estate sales or thrift stores and you see a mark that you're not sure about, you'll know just kind of in the back of your mind, hey, I think I remember seeing that somewhere. So let's get started. Oh, and one of these, so pay close attention, one of the marks or one of the jewelry pieces that I show you, one of the brands, I have something that I'm going to give away at the end of the video and you have to be live. So if you're watching later and you're like, darn it, I missed it, I'm going to be doing this again. So definitely hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you get notified when I go live and can come and join in. But it is one of the brands we're talking about today. So I've got something to give away at the end. Pay attention. Okay. So I am live, so let me pop the chat up and scoot over so I can say hello to everybody here. Hello in the chat. Hey, my friend Jason's there. Hello, Adeline. <clears throat> Adeline, sorry if I say your name wrong. Hey, Debbie and Jenny. Hello, hello. Hi, old and new treasures. And Darren, Evil Eve is there, and Lydia, the purple, uh, purple lily, is there. Hi, hi, one witch lady. Okay, so let's jump into this. And again, if you're new here, my name is Margaret. Hello, hello, nice to meet you. Um, I make videos all about making and saving money. A lot of my videos have to do with jewelry or merch by Amazon, different things like that. So anyway, here we go. Let's do this. First up. Shriner. And uh, let me just say also, I always appreciate it when I mispronounce things or I forget the name of what it, something is called. Um, leave me a comment because sometimes I'll say, ah, I can't remember my brain. You know, I'm not that old yet, but it's coming, right? So things sometimes don't click um, and I'll forget the name. So, or if I mispronounce something. Anyway, moving forward. Shriner is a jewelry maker that we need to have on our radar. This is the first one. So let me scoot down there we go oh and i have this up i have a reason so between each brand i've put my website texas gal treasures and the link to my jewelry lovers and sellers paid um it's a paid jewelry group it's five bucks a month um or a discount if you pay for the year but um yeah i'm i have this here as a placeholder so i know okay next i pull up the next uh name for the for the jewelry anyway moving forward shriner let's talk about that one Okay, so one of the websites that, that I've been finding a ton of information on, so it's a really good resource for you guys, is called illusionjewels.com. And this one is where I'm finding some of the maker's marks that we need to have, have back there in our, in our mind. So Shriner, New York, sometimes it looks like this. And then sometimes like this. Now, in the last video, I kept calling it a little, it looks like a little oval or something stuck on the back. And somebody said it was called a cartouche. I thought a cartouche was something else, but maybe it's it's got another term. So let me know. Let me know. So for now, I'll just keep calling it the little thing stuck on the back. Yeah. Anyway, maybe it'll sell me here. So this is what it looks like. So I'm going to show you what the, the mark looks like what some of the pieces look like, and what kind of um, price it can command. So let's take a look. So these are some of the pieces. Hi, hi in the chat. Hello. Let me scoot this over. Hi, Maggie. I'm trying to get my, I had it all set up, but then of course there's always fiddling that has to happen, right? So these are some of the pieces and some of the prices. So some of them, oh, that's a book about them. I mean, just take a look. Wow. So 245 bucks. They look like really blingy, rhinestone-y, crystal-y brooches and things like that. So Shriner, I mean, the prices are just out of this. I mean, but if I saw this, would I think, oh yeah, I'm going to ask close to 300 bucks for that, right? Um, it might be something that I think is a knockoff. So just taking the time to flip pieces over, even if you think, eh, it's just going to like, oh yeah, this... Looks like it's something somebody picked up from like, what is that, like Claire's or something like that. Maybe no. So flip it over, take a look for that mark on there. Okay, so here's another website that's really good, Collectors Weekly. They frequently have um, history or something about the brand written out. So, you know, made in the 40s, 50s, which makes sense with the style. <clears throat> and then... 
these are some more let me close out of the tabs that I've got previously let me kick myself later yes definitely blingy okay so there we go so more blingy blingy looking pieces for sure so Shriners jewelry generally has the name written on the back when it gets it gets tricky sometimes when you come up against these ones that just have um, a picture or an image and there's one hint hint coming up that's just an image right so um, keep your eye open for that one <laughs> that was a little hint I'm dropping about the giveaway later okay so taking a look I mean some of the prices are higher some of them are a little bit lower but overall it looks like really high prices on these Shriner Gabby says it, it's a, a German brand I think that's what you're saying <laughs> um, okay so next up this is letting me know okay time to switch over next let's see what's the next one okay let me flip it over Hopefully it goes as smooth as it did last time, but I'm already worried that it's not. <laughs> okay, oh, that's why I'm clicking the wrong thing. Oh, that would explain things. Here we go. So next up is Weiss. And this is a brand that, <coughs> part, pardon me, this is a brand that uh, many of us probably already know or may have just heard of. Maybe we haven't found any Weiss yet, but it's a name that we want to keep on our radar. So let's take a look at what, what Weiss looks like and what kind of prices it can command and what kind of marking you find on the back of these pieces. So um, this again is Collectors Weekly. You know what I ought to do? I ought to write a blog post sharing just all the sites that I visited for each thing, but wow, I'm gonna have to go back and do some looking. So it looks like Weiss is known for smoky rhinestones and using the Swar Swar Swarovski? Swar oh, I always get it wrong. Swarovski crystals in there, the Aurora Borealis and things like that. Now, was the Weiss? I think it is Weiss. There were a couple of them, and I think it was Vicky that was mentioning in the last video um, that there are knockoffs done of Weiss. So that's something to keep in mind when you find a piece that is marked Weiss to check it out and see if it is real or if it is a knockoff. So this is a website, VintageCostumeJewels.com, how to spot fake Weiss jewelry, um, showing, you know, fronts and backs and, and things like that. I think it was Vicky that shared that info in the comment section. That's why I always say check out those comment sections because there's a lot of times really good information. So here it looks like um, this is an example. With some of the fakes, the styles are a different type. The metal backs are textured but in a different way more along the lines of costume jewelry made in the 60s and 70s. So like this is a fake backing right like that. Um, so I did pull up, this was like a real backing and then the other one I pulled up a fake one to show you. But let's take a look too. Ah, oh, it's not gonna load. I was having problems with this page not loading earlier. I was worried about that. Um, but just knowing to, to look it up when you find it. So these are some of course they're already sold okay that just showing the rhinestones and stuff I know I pulled up some okay here we go so these are some Weiss pieces and this is just in a Google search so that's something else too to keep in mind like when you're buying them if somebody has a higher price and they're saying oh this is a Weiss piece you can get so so much more for it knowing like okay what does what do the fakes look like again what are the real ones you know based on the backings and things like that. So prices look like they can be anywhere from $40 up, even just for a brooch, which is nice. Looks like the Christmas tree one is pretty popular. No wonder people knock it off, right? All right, here's some more Weiss jewelry. I know I pulled up an Etsy. I thought I pulled up an Etsy search. Here we go. Is it gonna load for us? I like to do this because it gives us a good page full of what they look like and what kind of prices people are asking. So sometimes, I mean, it might just look like this rhinestone brooch, you know, but flip it over, take a look. Might be Weiss with these really nice crystals in it. Pretty stuff. Let's see. There is a butterfly one, 45 bucks. So cool. All right. So next up, this is telling me, hey, it's time for our next one.
or time to go join jewelry lovers and sellers. I'm not really good at promoting myself, but there we have it. <laughs> okay, so next up after Weiss, we're going to talk about Hobie. <clears throat> Again, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But this is one that that I've heard of. I've maybe found one piece ever of Hobie jewelry. But let's take a look again at the markings that we'll find and and what kind of pieces, what they look like. So these are some Hobie pieces. These look like a lot like the kinds of things my great grandmother wore. Hang on, let me scoot this over. Ah, I'm moving the wrong thing. Okay. Oh, goodness. Hang on. Here we go. There. Okay. So like these, that pink one, this cha cha, -cha bracelet is what they called it. Um, 155 bucks. Hey, hey, in the chat. Got more friends jumping in. Hello, hello. Thanks for coming. Go hit that thumbs up while I'm thinking about it. So really blingy again. Some of them, yes, some of them not so much. Like this is not necessarily as blingy as some of the other pieces. So they just look, they have this really rich look. But then I could totally see myself looking at something like this and just walking right by it thinking, eh, it's just like a costume jewelry brooch. Meh, you know. So flip it over, take a look. <clears throat> Let's see. <coughs> Lynn said, I had a whole bunch of Hobie once. Lots of faux pearls, gold tone pieces. Sweet, 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 sweet. All right, here's some more. I mean, they just look lush, right? Just look at this green. I love it. I love it. All right. Now, I want to make sure that I had the maker's mark pulled up. I'm trying to make sure I got that for all of them. Okay, yes. So here is a site called glitterbox.com and then forward slash Hobie. She gives a really good um, mock-up of the marks and what time era those pieces were made from. So if you look, like this Fleur de Lis before 1868, and then more current ones, 1958 to 1983, has this oval with Hobie inside it. Really tall letters, right? So that's cool. So it gives you a, an idea of how old your pieces might be. And again, um, Collectors Weekly has a really great article about Hobie pieces and things like that. So very cool. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, Kelly, thanks. All right, next, next up, close this out. Oh, wait, we're still on Hobie. <laughs> it's my Etsy search. I really like doing Etsy searches so I can just kind of get a nice view of all these different kinds of pieces. So here we go. Here's some different pieces. This is beautiful right here. I mean, so again, the price is going from 50 bucks all the way up to close to 400 bucks, just depending. And honestly, it just, I mean, there are people that collect certain higher end brands. And if there's that one piece that they're after, they're willing to pay the price for it. So keep that in mind when you're pricing your things. I'm just kind of scrolling through so you can get an idea. I mean, really, Hobie pieces kind of vary really, um, really greatly. I mean, so some of, some of the brands, you can really spot them because they're very similar across the board. But yeah, Hobie seems to have a lot of variety. That's the word. So next up, I feel like we're flying through it today. All right, that lets me know we're ready for the next one. <laughs> Late to the party, our says, hi, hi. <coughs> okay, so let's take a peek at what we have next. So I can, by the end, I'll have this, I'll have it down. <laughs> okay, so here we had, we had Hobie. So now number four, and I'm gonna slaughter this name, I'm just sure of it, Dominique Orientis. Paris. I hopefully didn't get it that bad, but Dominique Arientis Paris is one I have never, never, never found. Um, but let's see. Let me get my window at the right one. Boop. All right. Depends on age. They also had more mass produced items. Lynn says, oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this is Dominique Arientis Paris jewelry. I can say I've never found any ever, but I really like it. I mean, some of the pieces are just really beautiful. So looks like really big, bold pieces, maybe metals with like, here's these pearls inset. And here's this, it's got that 
maker's mark set on the back, Dominique, Orientis, Paris, across it. So again, here you can see the tag on the back. It's like affixed to it. <coughs> but I, I mean, these, these are some that I'm like, oh, I would wear that. I like that. You know, some of these pieces. But then if I saw this, I would think, oh, you know, it's just got these big, oh, what do you call, oh, my brain. This is what I'm talking about. The, um, oh my gosh, what do you call the things? <laughs> They're not called brackets. They're called something. I can't think of the word right now. This is, welcome to my channel. Hi. <laughs> so yeah, I, I would see this and maybe think, oh gosh, that's like a big costume jewelry, fakey piece, whatever. And not worth, I wouldn't have thought. But then you see that on the back and boom, there you have it. It's really something special. So. Cool deal. Looks like metal with inset pearls, inset rhinestones or crystals, whatever they happen to use. Okay. So, <laughs> thank you, Kelly. Yep. Go down there and hit the thumbs up button. I don't I haven't seen how many. Oh, you say 39 viewers. Okay. Hey. Hey, everybody. Okay. So, moving forward, these are some of the prices on this Dominique Orientis jewelry. It is really expensive. Prongs. There we go. <laughs> you understand, right? Sometimes your brain just is like, I'm not doing words today. Forget it. Only that's my everyday. <laughs> Sometimes like, nope. All right. Take a look though. Oh my gosh. Over a thousand dollars for this one. 800. Now I would love to find some of this. Look at this. It's gorgeous. I don't know that I would wear it, but I think it's beautiful. It's just like a piece of art. You know what I mean? Like you would see in a museum or something. Okay, so just, you know, real fast scrolling through some just to give you an idea of what kinds of things to look for. What does the mark mean if it has the letters O-R-A marked on it? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I, I may have read this before, but I'm at the moment, I don't know. Okay, again, just some pieces from that. And so here again, this is the, the mark on the back. Like that wanted to show you up close. <laughs> Thanks. Again, here's another one. And I'm guessing because of the prices that this one commands, that this one probably has somebody knocking it off too. I would say any of these that ha that go for some of these crazy high prices probably have knockoffs. So it's really um, a good thing to, to keep an eye out for if you are wanting, if you find one and you want to sell it, to make sure, just to double check on it to see if it's a, a, the real deal. Okay, so moving on. This is the Etsy search that I did. So here's that, you know, 750 bucks. Beautiful, just beautiful pieces. But they have, yeah, again, really high prices. Okay, all right, next up, let's take a look at who we've got next. Let me get the names popped up. All right, so we've already done Weiss. That's not right. We're on number five. <clears throat> number five, Accessa Craft. Accessa Craft? Acce I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. And I think this one is Accessa Craft New York, I believe. Let's double check that one. Okay. <clears throat> so here's a website called sarahcouture.com talking about Accessa Craft. Accessa I feel like I just can't say that. Let's not knock this over. Um, Accessa Craft Jewelry. Now, this is something I would pick up if, if I was just out and about looking at jewelry and I saw these like fishbone <laughs> necklace. I would totally pick it up because it's funky. Um, Patty says, does Chico's jewelry sell? You know what? So I have found that it will. There are people that, that are very brand um, loyal and they love their Chico's. You know what I mean? There are some people that, you know, just love their Chico's. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So this is Accessor Craft. Let's take a look at some of the maker's marks. Again, it's got that tag. Well, this is a, like a the tag that goes on like the jump ring sort of deal. Accessor Craft NYC. And let me scroll a little bit so you can see. Looks like metal type pieces. Pretty cool. Here's another um, tag. A few different ones here. Accessor Craft NYC. Oh, thank you, thank you, Arjo. 
<laughs> okay, and then let's take a look at the prices that this brand can command if you find it out in the wild. So we've got, you know, I mean, it's not through the roof, but still worth picking up if you're finding it out and about. I know I found some that were more than that. Like here's one, 225 bucks. But you know, if you find a, a brooch for a dollar and you can flip it for 20, 30, 35 bucks, 50 on this bracelet, you know, why not? So this one, again, it kind of varies. Some of the prices are really high and some of them are like, meh, okay. So definitely something to keep on your radar. Let's see. <laughs> Every day is a school day. That's right. <laughs> Where's my ruler? Stay in line or I'm going to wrap you over the knuckles, Graham. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. They're talking about something else real fast. Okay. So more excessive craft. So here we go. These are some more that were more higher end. This one with the different colored like harvest cabochons on there. And I've seen somebody... I may have one of these. Looks looks really familiar. This um, butterfly magnifying glass. I think I have one of these in one of my bins back there. So obviously this won't be what we're giving away today. Um, yeah. All right. So look at this one. Excessive craft gold elephant belt. But this is what I'm talking about. There, when you get a brand and then you also get a figural. I, I like picking up jewelry that's figural, like elephants and birds and cats and things like that because there are people that are really into that animal so somebody who is an elephant lover would pay $495 for a really awesome elephant belt buckle you know so okay <laughs> I never wrapped anybody over the knuckles when I taught just to clear that up <laughs> not at all <laughs> never mind um yeah I you know that's a different subject. Anyway, so here's here's this Illusion Jewels again, a really great resource for maker's marks of costume jewelry. So here we go, some of the different tags that you can find. Excessive craft, excessive craft. Again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing any of the names. So once again, <laughs> okay, I'm reading in the chat. So y'all can barely see the chat probably. So let's take a look at the next one. So we've got our first five down. I'm going to tell you the hint because I am doing a giveaway at the end. The question hasn't popped up. The, the, the brand I'm going to be talking about, asking the question about hasn't popped up. I'll let you know to so see if you're paying attention. I won't make it so hard. Okay. <clears throat> so next up is Marcel Boucher. I think that's how you pronounce that. Marcel Boucher. And isn't that like, I mean, I know that's probably his last name, but isn't it? That's a mouth, right? In French? I don't know. Okay, if you're one of my Frenchy friends, <laughs> you can tell me. Bouche, right? The bouche is the mouth. Okay. We don't need a French lesson, too. <laughs> one thing at a time. Okay. <clears throat> so, Marcel Boucher. I am hoping I'm saying that correctly. Here we go. I was trying to scooch it, but I realized I'm trying to scooch the wrong thing. Here we go. Uh, born in Paris, Marcel Boucher worked as a jewelry designer for Cartier. So that might explain why he's got really nice pieces. So let's take a peek at the mark. Bouch, Bouche's mouth. Yes. <laughs> Fermé le bouche, right? That means like, be quiet. <laughs> okay, so take a look. Oh my gosh, just look at this. $405. This ladybug on this leaf is just gorgeous. I I would I would put more money on it. I don't know whose listing this is, but if you're watching, you need to bump that price up and wait for that buyer because somebody's going to come along and love it. <laughs> Thank you, one witch lady. Okay, so again, some of these look just like some costume jewelry. You know, would I see this hanging on the little jewelry, like you know, the thing at the Goodwill that ha hangs all the the display, oh my gosh, of all the bracelets. Would, would I see this one and think, aha, that is a high-end Marcel Boucher bracelet. I think I need to pick this up, you know, and sell it for 45 bucks. No, but it may, now I know that I need to stop and take a peek at everything because it might be worth money. So 
just scrolling through Lucite, a Lucite watch, like clamper bracelet watch is selling for 95 bucks. And I know I get the comments, you know, well, these are not sold. Well, I don't always go off sold, first of all. Second of all, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it just gives me an idea of what people are pricing their pieces at. So it's okay. I'm trying to grab the wrong, I have too many things open and it's driving me bonkers. I'm trying to scoot this over, but I keep grabbing the wrong thing. Why? There it is. Scooting that. There. Okay, there we go. Okay, so moving on, let's take a look if I have the maker's mark up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there is a site as well. So if you'll take a look at this piece here, this is the back, and it'll have the, <clears throat> the name there, but then there'll be a number. And the number corresponds to a year uh, of when it was made, you know, like the, the maker's year. So let me show you another one. This is the back of this is the back of that ladybug one. It'll say it's this one says Boucher right here. And then patent pending. This one doesn't have the date on it. Some of them do, some of them don't. But again, here's the oh look, they give it a little cutout. So that's a really good I, I when I was doing this video, there's so many maker um sellers that didn't take a picture of the maker's mark, which is do it. Take a picture. So this one, they've got the name, and then you can see another little tag there that has a number on it. So there is a page, and I know I pulled it up. I'm going overboard, here we go. There's another number, there's the name. We get it, we get it, fine, move forward. <laughs> there is a website that gives us, these are some more of the pieces and prices that they can command, high prices. Here we go. This is vintagenorth.wordpress.com. They have a, a page talking about the numbering system for the marks on Marcel Boucher jewelry. So if you find one and it's got a mark between these numbers, then it's from maybe 1946. You know, if it's a 7,802, it's from the 60s, right? Or 1960, rather. So that is good to know. Marks with a copyright symbol are after 1955. Okay, so the one with the ladybug that just had the little copyright symbol. I don't know that I, that was a bolt. That wasn't a, or a screw. It wasn't a copyright symbol. Anyway, okay. But there may be some signatures use MB with or without the, all right, because that one had the patent pending on it. Okay, but anyway, this is, yeah, all right. Numbers, numbering system, good to know. Okay, so next up, I will, I digress myself. <laughs> I tell you what. All right, <clears throat> so after Marcel Boucher, we have got Ernst Gideon Beck. Okay, this one is one I need you to remember. <laughs> If you can, just remember Beck, okay? We're going to say Beck. In class, when I say Beck, you say butterfly. Beck. I'm imagining you're saying butterfly. So when I say Beck, you say butterfly. Beck. Butterfly. Here's why you need to remember Beck and butterfly. Because the maker's mark on Ernst Beck jewelry doesn't have the name. It just has... A butterfly. Let me get to the a picture of it so you can see it. It is just a butterfly. So this piece, this, let's get the name out here, Ernst Beck jewelry piece only has a little butterfly for the mark. So keep that in mind because these earrings, or the, rather belt buckle, this belt buckle is selling for $200. So some of these pieces I would walk right by. I mean, look at these. If I saw these earrings, I would just be like, meh, whatever. Meh, some like enamel, whatever. Um, but I need to start flipping them over and looking for that Beck butterfly. Because this, what is this? A pendant brooch is selling for $150. This set is selling for $135. And this is not something I would ask the lady at Goodwill to pull that tray out because I want to see that, you know, I just, I wouldn't. If I saw this, 
Antique Ernst Gideon Beck square gold plate black enamel brooch and the earring set. $285 is what that's selling for. So, when now, class, <laughs> when I say Beck, you say butterfly because we want to remember when we see this little butterfly on the back of a piece that that means money. <laughs> so, again, here's another one, 175 bucks. I'm telling you, if I saw this sitting in the tray at the Goodwill or Salvation Army, I wouldn't say, ooh, that's what I want to see. But now I may just say, show me everything and just start flipping everything over. <laughs> okay, there's that butterfly again. It's sort of the outline of a butterfly. I mean, that's this, pr this brooch. <laughs> okay, so that's good to know. Hint, hint. <laughs> this might come up on the test later. <laughs> Um, butterfly, that's right. <laughs> okay, so this one, now this website has got a little bit of a different butterfly on it. Um, so it just, you know, I would say if you see a little animal stamped on the back, grab it, right? So yeah, I know this, yeah, that's Swarovski. Swar Swarovski, I always say it wrong. Okay, I'm going to save this one over here. Okay, so... Let's take a look at the next brand that we want to that we want to talk about. <laughs> After Mar oh wait, do I yeah, we showed you back. Okay. The next one is Listener, and this is one that was a request because in the last jewelry video where I talked about the high-end jewelry brands you need to know, I asked for suggestions of different costume jewelry designers that I should include in the next one, and Listener was one that came up. So I have heard, and I probably have some listener pieces as well. Um, so this is another one to have on your radar. So again, from Collectors Weekly, there's a nice article talking about the history of the company. <clears throat> Pardon me. So let's take a look at what kinds of styles we might find. I keep trying to scoot the wrong thing over and it, there we go. Just to give you more space. There we go. Okay. So some of the prices are high, some of them are not so high, but that's okay. I think it's a good brand just to have on your radar because there are people that like the brand and, and are looking for listener pieces. So some of them, I mean, they, these ones remind me too of my, some of the stuff my great grandmother had and wore. So I wouldn't be surprised if when I start going through, maybe I had to do a haul. I have a box of her jewelry over there of my great grandmother's stuff. So maybe I would just do a, a haul. It might take a while to do that. It might take a couple, a couple videos to share some of her jewelry. Yep, they didn't throw anything away. They kept it all. <laughs> Again, real blingy. And then the, a lot of these, I'm going to say it wrong, Peru, Peru, where it's got the bracelet and the brooch and the earrings and the necklace. It's got the whole set, right? If I say that wrong, y'all tell me. Peru, Peru, P-A-R-U-R-E, I think is how you spell it. I know. Okay, so here we go. There's how you spell it. There we go. Large triple leaf, Peru, Peru. Let's just go with that for now. Okay, so it's got like the whole set going, right? Um, so again, this is Illusion Jewels, another great research website to check things out on. So... This is my Etsy search, which needs to pop up there. So some of the prices can be higher than others. Like here's one that's, they've listed it for 115. Whether they're going to get that or not, I don't know. But, I mean, I see some 40 bucks in there, 20. But if you're picking it up for a buck or two at a garage sale, sure, why not, right? Why not? Give it a try. Oh, this one's fun. I would put a higher price on that. I think somebody would really like that. Okay, next, time for the next one. Again, if you're not in jewelry lovers and sellers, why not join? It's lots of fun. <laughs> We'd love to have you. And I know we've got some of some of our members in the in the chat over here. Are some of these brands specific to the US? No, some are international. Some of these were French and, and things like that. So um, okay, so let's take a look at who we've got next. Da da da. Y'all can tell me if it's super annoying that I keep plugging my group, but <laughs> them's the breaks, right? Okay, here's the next one. Gerda Lingard Moniz. Can we say Moni Moni? 
Moni, Moni. Um, can you guess? I'll give you two guesses of where Gerda Lingard Moni's is. If I say her last name right, apologies, but give you two guesses <laughs> where she's, or even just regionally, where you think she's from. Okay, so here is, now this is really interesting because some of her pieces are not marked, but they have a very distinctive style, which is another style that is not, I'm not a fan of the style, but I'm a fan of how much she can ask for the pieces. Um, I'm just going to scroll so you can see. It's like these big chunky, chunky beaded necklaces. And a lot of them have this horn closure. Um, and I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. It's like carved horn. So a lot of the pieces, like you can see here, a lot of them aren't marked like this style, but it has that classic horn um, closure. So, I mean, yeah, it's something to think about. But again, if I saw this, would I think, oh, that, that's something I need to pick up. You know, or this, you can see the, the way that it's closed here. Look at how much they're asking for this. If I saw this, would I think, oh yeah, this is a piece I need to pick up. Right, sweet, they're guessing, the, I'm guessing somewhere in Scandinavia, Denmark, maybe. Yeah, I think I think one of these will say on here, I can't remember now. I asked the question that I don't know the answer to. Isn't that fun? So here's some more pieces. So it looks like big, chunky beads and stones, shells, but frequently they have a very distinctive clasp. Vikings, right? <laughs> just, just, let's just talk about Alexander Skarsgård for a minute. Let's just, let's just go to our happy place there with Alexander Skarsgård. <laughs> okay, now this is Etsy and what I'm noticing is some of these pieces are not, um, Linda or Gerda Lingard pieces, they're, they're listed as in the same style as, you know, Gerda Lingard style bra necklace or whatever. So, but I mean, just look at the prices that are, that are being asked for them, 80, 90, 100, 150. <clears throat> so what I'm noticing, okay, so here's one. If you'll look at the, the closure on it, those are real statement pieces for sure. See how it's got this um, horn, like carved from horn is what I mean. Why aren't you loading? Come on. Oh, you can't see because it's chopped off. You got to tell me. <laughs> okay, so it's got this horn closure. So frequently, this dyed buffalo horn, black burgundy, it's got this style closure, you know, and, and it's unmarked. So, yeah. But I know I pulled up some more, so let me show you. Um, this one actually has a tag on it, Moni's. And then I saw another one that had this bead type closure that somebody else had listed. I don't think I saved that one. But here again, they've got this horn closure. Now this one, when they ha when it has a metal closure like this, it does say, Mo I feel weird like I'm saying it wrong, Moni's. And Moni's? But it's, it looks like it rhymes with ponies. So, Moni's, right? Um, here we go. Let me pull up some more. So here, like when it has it, when it has a clasp like this, the name is stamped on the clasp. But when it has that horn style closure, oh, this one has a, a tag on it. So when it has that horn style closure, see, Moni's, it does not have, or from what I'm seeing out there, it doesn't have a mark. I'm trying to pull them up. Here we go. See, so it's like that. And then they just say, you know, good condition unsigned in the style of. So we're, it could be, maybe, maybe not. Some of them don't say in the style of. Some of them say, you know, they feel fair, fairly certain, you know, or in the style of. Goodness gracious. But here, like this horn type closure. I think you've got it. I think I've mentioned it about a zillion times. This is one of the ones that's in the style of. In the style of, because it, I mean, even the clasp doesn't look right. If, if it had been unmarked, how do you determine? That's the, that's the thing that I don't know. So, I mean, personally, even if I felt strongly about it being, oh, here we go, Danish. There she is. Um, even if I felt strongly about it being a, a piece, and I'm, there may be a way to um, determine it. I would still, I would, if I saw it, I would pick it up. If I saw it out and about, 
And then I would, you know, do some research and then I might even still say, you know, I, I really strongly feel this, this is a piece, you know, that is authentic, but it's unmarked. So I would list it. I would probably do that, like list it in the style of, because if you don't have the, you know, if there's knockoffs of it, especially if they're commanding that price, but I'm sure there's probably a website that I did not <laughs> investigate that will, will tell you. Um, how to do it. Use the course. <laughs> right. These are some, some people love the, you know, really showy and that's good. You know, everybody, you know, takes all kinds, right? Okay. Are we really on the last one already? I guess we are. Okay. Let's take a look at the last one and then we'll do our, the giveaway. Okay. So Ben Ammon, dun, 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 dun. we just had one of these pieces come up in our last jewelry jar. Hmm, I wonder what the giveaway is going to be. <laughs> okay, so, ah, uh, I'm trying to move this over. So let's take a peek at some Ben Ammon pieces. All right, hang on. You know it has to have, there has to be technical difficulties, right? It's just the way it is. I'm clicking, I'm scooching. Okay, so this is a, a brooch, and this one has got the tag on the back, Ben Ammon. They don't always look like that. Sometimes it's just the name written on there. And this brand is still being made, and the pieces now are really elegant looking. So, ah, I mean, some of them are sort of an Art Deco style like a revival type earrings. I mean, just look at these. They're really beautiful. More um, recent. But some of the prices are really, really good on these. So now they've been, <clears throat> they've been around for a little bit. So they also have some pieces that look a little different. Again, this is sort of the same thing we were just looking at. Now let's take a look at Ben Ammon. If my screen is off, I keep moving it around, but... I'm trying to get it where it's just right so you can see everything I'm showing you. There, okay. All right, so here we've got some Ben Ammon pieces and the kinds of prices. So 25, here's a necklace for 95. The style, again, kind of goes all over the place. Just depends on the era that it was made. Ben Ammon, Saks Fifth Avenue, you know, that's 40 bucks. Really pretty Thanksgiving Ben, okay, interesting. So, and then we also learned when we did the jewelry jar, I guess it was yesterday, wasn't it? Um, that some of the pieces have this like imitation amber where it looks kind of like an amber, but it's not. It's just a cabochon. See, Ben Ammon silver. Now I wonder if that's, I wonder if that one really is amber because look at the price and it's in sterling silver. We have to flip it over. Oh, they don't show the back. Okay, well, that's just not cool. Anyway. <laughs> You gotta flip that over, you know, you gotta see the back of it. Hmm. Anyway, so those are some different styles. I mean, again, it just sort of varies depending on the era that it was made, but some of the prices can be, you know, 50 bucks plus <clears throat> on these pieces. So this is the website, the Ben Ammon website, so you can see they're, they're still making jewelry, really pretty. Really pretty stuff and about us okay so let's take a peek at who we've got how many people we have with us today and then we'll do our giveaway because I do have some ear their earrings their earrings that we're gonna give away we've got 63 viewers okay go over there and hit that thumbs up button and I'm gonna show you so I do have these Ben Ammon earrings from the jewelry jar yesterday that I'm gonna give away. I thought that would be fun to do for today. So they are clip on like so. They are marked Ben Ammon right there. So these ones are gonna come out to one of our friends. Jason says, I like earrings. Woohoo, you'd look good in these, Jason. I think you would. All right, so let's see if you were paying attention in class. Now I'm gonna look in the chat, so hopefully yours looks as the same as mine. So my question is, what is the brand called? You can just give me the last word. What is the brand called if you see a little butterfly on the back? So let's see who can remember. You don't have to spell it right. It can be phonetical. It can be just the last name too. 
<laughs> Do you remember the name of the jewelry brand that has just a little butterfly on the back? Let's see. They're huge. There we go, Myra, you got it. <laughs> Let's see if it shows up over here. Myra Cabral, Beck, yep, if you see a butterfly, remember, Beck. Ta-da! Okay, so Myra, send me a message. These are gonna be coming to you, woohoo! All right, <laughs> so close, oh yeah. So the if we see butterfly, we think Beck, because they, oh gosh, Jeff, shush. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah, thank you everybody so much for coming to hang out and talk more jewelry designers. And if you have a jewelry designer you want to see on the next one, because this is fun, I've already got a list going for my next 10, um, because I have a list of about three so far. So if you've got a, a suggestion for the next one, leave a comment in the comment section down below after the video is over if you're live, and let us know what other costume jewelry designers, high-end brands that we should keep our eyes open for in the future. Okay, thank you again so much, everybody. Go over there and hit that thumbs up button, and I will see you guys later. Bye, everybody.